Good evening, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching the evening news on News Now with me, Sumita Kareer. We'll uh, over the next uh, 30 minutes, we'll of course go over the top stories of the day. But beginning this uh, show with some breaking news coming in as far as India's GDP data is concerned. In fact, uh, uh, the provisional estimates of the annual GDP for 2023-24 and quarterly estimates for Q4 of 2023-2024 have really been released. Now, the real GDP has been estimated to grow by 8.2 percent in FY20. 23-24 as compared to the growth rate that was seen uh, of 7% seen in FY22 to 23. Moreover, we are also learning that the real GVA has grown by 7.2% in 23-24 uh, over the growth rate of 6.7% that was achieved in 2020-23. And uh, of course, uh, we'll keep giving you as and when we keep getting all of those numbers. But let's first uh, go across to our experts who are joining us live on the show and get their perspectives on the initial set of numbers that are just trickling in. So we're now joined by Govinda Rao, who's a Chief Economic Advisor, Brickworks Ratings, former Director, NIPFP, and Aditi Nair, Chief Economist, ICRA. Also, Devang Shah, the Head of Fixed Income Access and Mutual Funds. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, I want to first get uh, your thoughts and your first comments on, uh, on the number that's been out, that of 7.8% for Q4 FY24. Uh, if each of you could start. Let's first uh, begin with Govind, then we'll go to Aditi and Devang. Govind, uh, can you give us your first reactions at what is your overall assessment of the number that's uh, come out, given that you know we've, we've only seen uh, a positive commentary, a bullish commentary uh, coming in from multilateral agencies, S&P uh, uh, ratings also elevated India's uh, uh, credit rating stance as well uh, from stable to positive. Now, what do you really make of the numbers, uh, Govind? I think it's good news. Um, it, I'm, I think it's much better than what the market expected. Um, and, uh, and, you know, sort of 7.8% GBA growth, I'm um, 7.2% uh, GBA growth uh, is much better than what, um, you know, everyone expected. And so, in that sense, you know, actually this 8.2% is more or less similar to the, the average that you had in the last three quarters. So you have, uh, uh, you know, in fact, uh, the people were expecting it to be sub 8%, but then it's more than 8.2%. That's a good news. And that has happened in spite of the fact that um, I'm sure the agriculture must have fared very badly. Um, but uh, my own uh, feeling is that the manufacturing must you know, sort of since the base numbers were very low last year, in the last quarter, uh, things much have, must have improved much better there, both manufacturing and services sectors. Right. Right. Let me now go across to Aditi. Uh, Aditi, in fact, that's exactly what, uh, uh, you know, we've also been observing. The street was estimating quite a conservative number, but this is coming much better than what was expected, although it has moderated a bit as far as Q3 was concerned. Absolutely. You know, the way we had done the calculation was we had estimated GVA first and then we had looked at what the likely gap would be between GDP and GVA growth in this quarter. And uh, therefore, we had arrived at our forecast of the GDP number. Now, first of all, uh, GVA growth is higher than what we anticipated. But so is the difference between the GDP and GVA. The wedge that we had forecast uh, was about 100 basis points. And what's come across in the provisional data today is 140 basis points. And therefore, there is an even wider gap. Uh, between the GDP growth number and what uh, was forecast by us, which was pretty close to the median uh, for the market. Now, uh, there are a lot of revisions in the earlier data. I've not been able to look at all of the numbers closely, but I can tell that at least the agricultural numbers seem to have been revised. Uh, for instance, for Q3, the initial estimate was a contraction, and now it looks like a 1.1% growth. So we're obviously having, uh, we'll have to go back and uh, go through all the uh, sector-wise, quarter-wise uh, numbers to get a better sense of, uh, you know, what to make of uh, this quarter's number. But one thing I think uh, that... Uh, one of the reasons we were expecting growth to moderate sequentially was that uh, the commodity price benefit for margins uh, has been going away over the last uh, you know few uh, months uh, with commodity prices kind of catching up to their year ago levels and that's something that uh, stood out when I was very quickly going through the release that uh, the industrial sector growth uh, is uh, peaking in Q2 and then coming off in Q3 and Q4 and I think a large part of this is the commodity price story. 
Right, uh, let's now uh, go across to our third guest, Devang. Thank you very much uh, for very patiently waiting it out. Uh, your first thoughts, and I also want to get your view on, on, on you know, the impact that RBI is expected, divid RBI's dividend uh, payout, you know, that was higher than expectations. That, how, how, how much of an impact is that going to have in uh, the GDP of FI25 Q1? Sure. Uh, so, see, for, first of all, the number is quite positive, as I think both the other panelists spoke about, and it was it's significantly higher than what we also anticipated. But we are also looking at GVA, and uh, the GVA number is ballpark somewhat similar to our expectations. We were uh, close to 6, 6.1, 6.2 number, and the GVA has come 6.3. On an overall perspective, though, this number continues to be on the higher side. Uh, uh, we need to look at the internals, but yes, uh, the manufacturing sector seems to be good and the corporate guidance continues to be uh, better. From a bond market perspective, I think this number would not have a significant impact on uh, either side. Markets are now uh, looking at uh, what's happening on the policy front. As you rightly pointed out, people are waiting eagerly for the election results. And uh, if we get uh, the government back, I think the somewhere down the line, the thought process across is that what would be the impact of this additional dividend which RBI has declared on the fiscal map. Our assessment is that uh, with the entire outlook on India being upgraded by SNP on the rating front, we believe somewhere down the line there is a high possibility uh, and if you actually look across at the internals of the SNP release, they speak a lot about fiscal consolidation, give a lot of merit on growth and fiscal consolidation. So our assessment is that if we get the current government back, they might look at fiscal consolidation and probably pave the way for some bit of uh, borrowing cut in the neck in in uh, the uh, second half of the year. Our assessment on borrowing cut is close to fifty to seventy five thousand crores uh, possibly in this year. Right. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, go back to Mr. Rao. Uh, Mr. Rao, um, I mean, you know, of course, there's a lot of focus. Uh, there's been a lot of focus this year on some of the sectors like defense, uh, manufacturing, power, railways, etc., infrastructure as well. Uh, how do you see, uh, you know, FI25 really shaping up as far as a policy push by the government is concerned? Of course, the ma markets have really been factoring continuity. They've been saying that if the current government, the current dispensation comes back to power, it's going to be positive for the markets and, of course, for all of these sectors. Keeping all of that in mind, how do you really look at the economy fairing? Well, I think uh, the good news is likely to continue into FY25. That's because agriculture is going to be much better than what it was in, I mean, it was in FY24. You know, there is a good news about the, the, the weather forecast, the rainfall and, and, you know, obviously the agriculture is going to do much better. That will also cool prices to, uh, you know, food prices to a considerable extent. And then this RBI dividend, which you mentioned earlier, is going to help both in uh, compressing the fiscal deficit as well as, you know, keeping up the capital expenditure which the government has been doing in the last two, three years. Um, so, you know, the government has uh, a target of compressing the fiscal deficit to at the union level to 4.5 percent by 25 26 and this will help in, in that uh, matter and it's and uh, so all in all and uh, obviously there is nothing to prevent um, uh, there are no sh immediate shocks additional shocks and uh, already some shocks but the additional shocks that are like to happen so the economy is the buoyancy buoyant in the economy is likely to continue into the FY25. Right. So you are saying that buoyancy in the economy is going to continue and it's all uh, going to be, uh, uh, you know, all good as far as the Indian economy is concerned. I want to uh, go to you, Aditi, and really, uh, you know, understand what do you really make of then the rate cut cycle? Uh, how soon or how later can we really expect that to come in considering, you know, that, that that's uh, really uh, what everybody's focus has been on? Sure. Um, you know, firstly, if we look at uh, the rate card cycle, I think June uh, pretty much is off the table for uh, even a stance change or uh, any kind of, uh, you know, change, major change in commentary indicating that uh, our rate cards are imminent. 
um i would say that even august is now becoming a question mark if growth is this strong then why do we need rate cuts uh, unless we are completely convinced that uh, inflation is going to uh, trend down to the 4% mark and stay there over a period of time now by august at least we'll be halfway through the monsoon season so we should be in a better position to extrapolate from those trends to how the food inflation uh, trajectory is likely to pan out uh so i won't uh, rule out a stance change completely from august but i would certainly say that with growth this strong uh the likelihood of uh, uh you know even a rate cut in uh, a stance change in august and a rate cut in october has actually gone down Right, and Devang, what do you make of the rate cut cycle? Of course, uh, you know Aditi has shared her perspectives as far as a possible rate cut is concerned. Do you do you really expect that, considering that the numbers are really showing resilience? The numbers have been great. We've also seen commentary coming in from multilateral agencies as far as India's economy is concerned. Do you expect that to be advanced a bit rate cuts? So I agree with Aditi here. At this point of time, uh, looking at the growth outlook. uh specifically i think rbi will not be in any hurry to cut rates uh, uh unless and until we get a, a complete handle on inflation they would want to be conservative uh, just before the onset of monsoons so our perspective is if monsoon goes well and probably we are going to the trajectory close to 4% they don't see any kind of sustained risk on inflation because the growth is good i think they will be slow and measured in cutting rates our assessment is also similar probably we are looking at uh the second half of the year for rate cuts Right. So, second half of the year is what you are factoring in as far as rate cuts is concerned. Let me go back to Mr. Rao. Mr. Rao, let's now speak about the risks uh, to the economy in FY25. You have, of course, spoken about uh, about how uh, how the Indian economy is resilient. Uh, you know, consumption is picking up. Several sectors are really getting that policy boost, that much needed policy boost from the government, along with that RBI dividend that only makes things easier for the government in terms of spending. But what are the downside risks to economy that you see in FY25 playing out? um you know one of the interesting thing that is that i see in the last few in the last few years is that the economy has got a um, little bit of immunity from many of the the risks that we see you know you had external risks you had um, oil price risks and you had uh, a practically practically bad monsoon last year uh, in, and in spite of all that the economy has done reasonably well so i do not really see a major risk coming and, and obviously since the economy has acquired a certain degree of um, immunity i you know for various re for reasons i do not see a major risk uh, happening um you know um, i mean i don't see another covid happening <laughs> so so i think i am um, not going to be very pessimistic on that Okay, you are not going to be sounding uh, very pessimistic on that. But Aditi, what about you? What are some of the challenges that you really see? Mr. Rao was mentioning about the geopolitical conflict playing out in the Middle East. But aside that, any any other risks that you see? be as uh, uh, optimistic as uh, dr rao i will offer some uh, risks that we need to be watchful of first of all you know right now on the monsoon side what we got uh, in the latest uh, forecast from the imd is indicating a uh, pick up in rainfall in the second half of the monsoon season now typically that's when the standing crops are already there in the fields they're you know uh, growing and if you have concentrated bouts of very heavy rainfall that's actually not very good for uh, the standing crops so we can't completely rule out uh, that that there could be uh, intermittent uh, you know bouts of heavy rainfall that actually end up being slightly damaging uh, so i think climatic issues is something that we have to remain watchful of uh, particularly for agriculture and also for uh, you know the implications for the wider uh, economy and inflation uh in particular uh second thing uh, there are going to be some transient factors that are going to have an impact on quarterly growth rates uh, i haven't had a chance to look at the uh, fiscal data uh, yet uh, we got the provisional data for march uh, and april i think while we were uh, uh, on the air so i haven't been able to look at that but i did see the core sector data that came out uh, around 5 uh, o'clock and uh, cement uh, growth has actually pretty much flatlined in the month of april uh, so with the elections and the way we do think that uh, government of india's capex is going to be slow in this quarter 
and that's perhaps what has really brought down the cement uh, sector growth uh, so much uh, it just grew by 0.6% in the month of april so intermittently we are going to find some impact on some sectors from uh, the uh, you know parliamentary elections and model code of conduct but this is transient this will reverse itself and we will see a pick up uh, in the second half of the year my concern is that even if we you know channelize the uh, unexpectedly high rbi dividend to higher capex can it get absorbed in uh, the amount number of months that we have left after the full budget is presented and once the monsoon is over because typically it is hard to really push out a lot of capex activity uh, during uh, the monsoon months so can we absorb uh, uh, such a high uh, amount of capex in let's say 6 to 7 months of fi 25 um i suspect this is going to be a year which is going to be easier to show a larger amount of fiscal consolidation uh, and next year is when we are going to see higher expenditure so a higher fiscal multiplier would be coming in in uh, the next fiscal year and uh, you know concomitantly it's going to be harder to sustain fiscal consolidation uh, in fi 26 as compared to fi 25 So you're saying that uh, it is going to be difficult, uh, you know, for that con fiscal consolidation to be maintained. But at the same time, you you suspect no big dramatic changes, no big dramatic challenges for the economy. Then Devang, let me come to you now. Then can we expect this, uh, you know, eight percent growth in the next two three years to sustain itself as far as the India growth story is concerned? Yeah. So. Uh, see, first of all, we are doing quite well. So, from a relative perspective, when we look across at the rest of the world, let's look at the developed markets. I think probably China is struggling. Other emerging market economies, we are actually far much more better place. So, at this point of time, from a macro perspective, are we in a Goldilocks period? Completely agree with that. Uh, obviously, I, I think both Dr. Rao and Aditi spoke about it. I'll, uh, I'll probably uh, echo some of the sentiments of Aditi as that. I think my personal view is somewhere down the line, the best of the growth cycle in the near term is somewhat behind us. Uh, we are seeing somewhere down the line of a roadmap towards fiscal consolidation, and all of us are uh, we understand that once fiscal consolidation or the fiscal impetus reduces, it does impact growth. We are also seeing uh, financial and credit conditions to start getting tighter. RBI has been very very proactive, and wherever somewhere down the line they. Uh, anticipate some kind of issues in future they're probably tightening somewhat or adding some bit of guardrails around it so i think uh, the cd credit growth should see some bit of tapering off uh, thirdly i think uh, uh, the way uh, uh, we are seeing measures at uh, the chinese economy and probably some bit of impact of that on commodities we've already seen a 20 25% increase in commodity base metal prices over the last 3 to 4 months and this can be a worry uh, for us in future so our perspective is uh, somewhere down the line the best of the growth in the near term should be behind us yes that doesn't mean we are uh, significantly going to slow down I, our assessment is probably for the next uh, 12 to 18 months uh, we should uh, be hovering around 6 to 6 and a half percent kind of growth numbers and that should be good from a macro perspective Okay, so uh, Mr. Rao, let me come to you. I think everybody has been watching and waiting with bated breath uh, on on the next big event after election counting. I want to understand from you in terms of the upcoming budget. How do you think these numbers will really influence the upcoming budget? Uh, I I brought this uh, uh, you know point uh, earlier in my conversation with you about RBI's uh, super bumper dividend that was given to the government. Will that really translate into a big capex announcement or big? Uh, you know policy is being announced because aditi was also mentioning a very important point that this is going to be monsoon season so any development activity in the near term will be curbed what is your assessment in terms of how this number is going to impact uh, and influence the upcoming budget well i mean with the additional uh, you know sort of uh, uh, dividend from the reserve bank of india as i mentioned a part of it will go into will help in the fiscal consolidation process because um, in the in the interim budget not adequate uh, uh, provision has been made for many in in many of the particularly in the revenue expenditure side so some of these things will be made um, you know with the better um, revenues that you have and um, so i would think that um, the the i mean they are not going to make much a great deal of difference in terms of fiscal 
deficit target 5.1% for the deficit that was uh, you know given in the interim budget i think they will uh, stick to that and to the extent they have a, a little additional uh, revenue they will possibly put it for capital expenditure and um, again one of the good things that is that uh, we see is that the gst has settled and then the revenues have been increasing and uh, of course we should see what the revenues i mean april is the month where obviously you get a lot lot more revenue for various reasons but then there is a shift in the the gst collection and also the buoyancy in income tax has also been reasonably good so they should have sufficient right. you know sort of comfort this year but then as aditya has mentioned possibly next year and then year thereafter and next year is, things are not going to be that easy because you have to make a, a significant uh, you know compression in uh, fiscal deficit um right. also there will also there will be one other problem because i think the rate cut cycle in the west particularly in those countries is likely to be advanced uh, with the inflation under control and that could have an implication on the 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 external finance possibly um, the the financial flows and so that's something which needs to be looked at otherwise i think the the, the 2025 26 um, is not I mean, i'm sorry 24 25 is not going to be that bad and we'll have to see how the things work out for 2025 26 to at least see well we'll have to wait out uh, for uh, how that really plays out but for now indian economy is growing at 7.8% in fact it has grown by 7.8% in q4 fy24 and thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for your analysis of the numbers that have come out the gdp numbers that have come out and the factors that are going to further influence uh, uh, the indian economy thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us uh, this evening meanwhile uh, we are heading into um, uh some breaking news that's uh, really uh coming in all right i'm being told that uh, of course that's coming up uh, uh, in our next show but for now we're completely out of time thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for joining us uh, on this broadcast and with that it's a wrap on this edition of news now but do stay tuned to 18 hour for more news and updates